Okay, today we are going to review the direct method of leg length inequality, um, which is performed in supine or laying with face up. Uh, we have our patient in this position, and the first or the most important thing, if you're going to try to be repeatable in your measure, is always try to standardize your approach. And so I'm going to kind of go through some of those points um, as we go along, and 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 uh, so you can be repeatable in the clinic. So you're you know, you're repeatable between yourself, maybe from a, from a treatment session to a treatment session, or repeatable between yourself and a colleague um, looking at the same patient. So let's start with what we call setting the pelvis. And by setting the pelvis, what we're essentially trying to do is just get all the musculature around the pelvis, lumbar spine, uh, hips, to just contract and then relax. And so the person is is, is, is hopefully in some sort of symmetry of muscle balance around the pelvis. So we're going to ask our patient to bring both legs up and we're going to ask him to bridge up or lift his buttocks off the table and to hold it there. And what I'm going to ask him to do is resist against me pushing his legs apart. And I'm going to push out gentle, build up my contraction or his contraction. And then I'm going to ask him to let, you know, I'm going to let go nice and slowly. And then I'm going to ask him to resist my pushing his knees together. So I'm going to build up the contraction, and then I'm going to ask him to relax. And then we're going to have him bring his legs down. And I am going to then bring his legs out a little bit. Okay. All right. And we sort of set the pelvis. The next thing I typically will tell you to do, or what the research tells you to do, is, is somehow standardize the position of the legs. BD and all tried to put the malalai together, but for some people that doesn't work because of their, of their thigh girth or, 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 or uh, alignment of their, of their thigh uh, tibial angle. Or you can use a block of wood, so something very simple just to bring the feet together, okay? And just sort of set that distance. And then you can take that away. The other thing that you want to try to, to do is, is make sure that you are as symmetrical as possible, but you don't, don't go too crazy with the alignment of the leg. If one leg is rolled out versus the other, you at least want to try to see if you can get the patellas facing up um, and maintain whatever their normal malalar torsion is or tibial, uh, tibial angle. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to do a tape measure measurement in this position after we set the pelvis. And, and if you review the literature, there it is. A thousand different ways that people measure this. Most of them are considered non-reliable. There are a few that have been demonstrated to be reliable, and the reason is because they've set a procedure and, and, and did the same thing every time. There's, there's been um, measurements that go from the umbilicus to the medial malleolus, the umbilicus to the lateral, uh, from the ASIS to the medial, ASIS to the lateral. Um, BD recommends you go to the medial from the ASIS, um, but there are some issues with that, and um, I'll go over that. I actually prefer going from the ASIS to the lateral, because I find the lateral easier to palpate. So we'll talk about that as we go along. So let, what I'm going to do is take a regular tape measure, cloth tape measure, and you're actually going to use the edge of the tab on the tape measure. You're going to palpate the individual's ASIS, and the, th the thing about the ASIS is that you don't want to be on the most anterior peak or roundness of the prominence. What you want to do is get underneath it. So you're repeatable every time, that you find the same location every time. So I'm going to take my thumbs and I'm going to feel for the ASIS. I'm going to go inferior and then push up where my thumbs don't move anymore against the inferior shelf of the ASIS, so the anterior superior iliac spine. So then I'm going to take my tape measure and I'm going to take the plastic tab and I'm going to place that tab up as far as it goes with my thumb and hold it there. And then I take the tape measure and I'm using, I usually use the millimeter sign and I'm going to run it down to the lateral malleoli because I find it easier to do. When you go to the medial side you can also do that but I find that the medial malleolus is is less prominent and it's much more difficult to kind of find a repeatable spot but um, 
you know, you can do that because it has been demonstrated to have some repeatability. I like the lateral because it's usually more prominent and I will take my, my, my index finger and push it up against the inferior shell and then I will sort of pinch off the tape with my thumb where that measurement ends. And we'll take a look at this measurement and it is 84, almost 85 centimeters. Okay, so now I'm going to go on the other side. And I'm going to find the ASIS. I'm going to go on to the inferior shelf. I'm going to take my tape, the tab of my tape measure, and I'm going to run it along the leg. And I am going to go to the most inferior portion of the lateral malleoli, push up, and pinch off the tape. And I get about 87 and a half centimeters. So we seem to have a leg length inequality for this individual. One of the issues between measuring to the lateral versus the medial is that individuals may have a, a injury, they may have a swollen knee, um, they may have a thigh that perhaps is, is more hypertrophied and, or more atrophied on one side. And so when you go from the ASIS over to the medial side, you're going to account for some of those things. And why I like to go to the lateral is one, because the prominence are easier to palpate, but two, that you're sort of bypassing some of the influences of the, of the thigh girth or the knee girth within that measurement. You sort of bypass it. So let's take a closer look at the measurement, what I'm talking about, where I'm standardizing my, my tape measure and then pinching off my measurement. Okay, so here's a, just a little close up of, of what I'm talking about palpating and measuring the prominence of the anterior superior iliac spine. Right here, it's very easy to feel is the ASIS on our, our subject here, or model. And you can see when I'm right on the, the anterior portion, it's very easy to slide off and move in any direction. But if you go just distal to that, and you then push up into it, I am quite stable. So that's what I recommend doing your measurement from. Not to try to do it from its most prominent point because it's unstable there. So what I'm talking about with the tape measure, it's not necessary to use the zero point and try to get that there because it's very difficult. Just use the end of the plastic tab and I put it underneath inferior and I just push it up till it, 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 there is no more give and that's where I start my measurement. All right, so now we're gonna take a look down um, at the malleoli when we take this measurement, and as you can see, I use my, my index finger to go right onto the inferior shelf. I have the tape, and I have it taut against his body. I have, I have this, the same side face up all the way down, and I am going to pinch, push up into the malleoli, then pinch off where my, where my, my thumb is meeting my index finger, and then I take the reading there, and again, we have about 85 centimeters.